The river Hindon, ancient, venerable, the witness of countless millennia. Sadly, thanks to mankind's indiscriminate ravages, today the Hindon is an unclean, polluted drain and the carrier of death and disease. Scientific investigation of the river's catchment area by the Janhit Foundation has confirmed that its toxic contamination is leading to the early deaths of those who live by these waters. This is Hindon, the Black Hindon, the Dead Hindon. Till the decade of 80s, the agrarian community of this region used to irrigate their fields with the river water. But during these two decades, the face of the river has changed. Today, the river carries a heavy load of pollutants, mainly heavy metals like lead, chromium, cadmium and deadly pesticides. There is hardly any oxygen left in the river water. Historically known as the Harnandi, the Hindon has for centuries provided sustenance to the rural communities of western Uttar Pradesh. So nourishing has it traditionally been that its waters have been revered for their curative benefits. How tragic then that today the healing medicinal water has turned into black, foul-smelling poison. <laughs> अपने ब्याह शादी के चावल दाल सब इसी से बनाते हैं और इस मील की वजह से 20 साल से उरे उरे यू काम सब बर्बाद कर दिया है। The course of the river takes it through the six districts of Saharanpur, Muzaffarnagar, Meerut, Bagpat, Ghaziabad and Gautam Buddh Nagar. A journey over 250 kilometers long. It is joined along the way by its two main tributaries, the Krishni which meets it at the Barnava village and the western Kali, which becomes united with it at the village of Pitloka. In this long passage to its destination, the mighty river Yamuna in the Tilvara village of the Gautam Bodhnagar district, the Hindon drains a vast catchment area covering about 7,000 square kilometers of land. This includes not just farmland, but also a number of towns and villages. As a result, millions of people who live along the course of the river are undergoing slow poisoning and are dying untimely deaths. The main reason behind the death of this river is the untreated effluents being discharged by the industries and mainly the paper mills, the sugar mills, the distilleries, the slaughterhouses, the agriculture runoff of the fields and also the domestic sewage which is released from small towns and big cities. Along with the Krishni and the Kali, which are its two main tributaries, the Hindon has 60 industrial manufacturing units which release their poisonous chemicals into the river. There are as many as 32 paper manufacturing units and 15 plants for manufacturing sugar and distilling alcohol. The Hindon River really is polluted to an extraordinary level. The results that we have found as part of our Hindon River study has shown gross exceedances of both heavy metals and pesticides exceeding Bureau of Indian Standards and World Health Organization standards for safe drinking water. Adding to the deadly effects of industrial waste is the release of untreated domestic sewage into the river. As there are no sewage treatment facilities along the length of the river, raw domestic waste is released directly into it from all the villages and cities the Hindon and its tributaries pass through. The quality of the Hindon River is uh, uh, polluted found polluted and the main reason is uh, that there is uh, no fresh flow of the Hindon River. The discharge is only for the domestic and as well as industrial. Agriculture dominates the economy of western Uttar Pradesh and sugarcane is the primary crop of the area. This crop requires huge amounts of irrigation, a need that is met by obtaining large quantities of water from the Hindon and from the underground water table. The unfortunate result of this is that with less water in the river catchment, the dangerous industrial and domestic wastes 
cannot get sufficiently diluted. This leads to a severe concentration of these wastes in the catchment water. During the study carried out by the Janhe, samples of water from 22 locations along the full length of the Hindon River were carefully analyzed and tested. Physical, chemical and biochemical parameters were observed for the analysis. These parameters included the amounts of dissolved oxygen and biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD for short. The rigorous testing procedure brought to light some shocking results. Each of the 22 samples had dangerously high biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD levels, which means that along the entire length of the Hinden, water from the river is highly unsafe for drinking or bathing. And measurements of dissolved oxygen revealed that dissolved oxygen levels are zero throughout the length of the river. A river with no oxygen is a dead river because no aquatic life can survive in it. In India, the central authority responsible for the control of pollution is the Central Pollution Control Board or CPCB. According to its prescribed standards, the maximum permissible level of lead in surface water is the tiny amount of one hundredth of a milligram per litre. In the Hinden, the amount of lead is a full 179 times the permissible standard. In the Kali, it is over 110 times the acceptable level. Similarly, the acceptable amount of cadmium is 0.005 milligrams per liter. In the Hinden, the cadmium level is nearly 16 times the safe value for drinking water. And likewise, the maximum permissible level of chromium within surface water is 0.10 milligrams per liter. In the Krishni, the level is 46 times this figure. In the Kali, 58 times and in the Hinden a shocking 123 times. Anyone using this water for domestic purposes is sure to suffer from heavy metal poisoning. The investigation conducted by Janhit also measured pesticide contamination levels in the underground water table. The stringent test confirmed that lead, chromium and cadmium from the pesticides were present in the groundwater. Lead levels were discovered to be nearly 35 times the acceptable limit prescribed by the World Health Organization for safe drinking water. It is obvious that villages forced to rely on groundwater are undergoing slow poisoning through drinking water. A large number of people were found to be suffering from cancer, neurological disorders, digestive problems, skin ailments and respiratory disorders. These are the very diseases that occur as a result of poisoning by heavy metals like lead, cadmium and chromium. The connections therefore are obvious. खाज खारिश के मरीज, दम्मे के मरीज, गठिया के मरीज, रीड की हड्डियों के मरीज, पेट की अंतरियों के मरीज बहुत पाए जाते हैं। 107 people have died in the last five years alone from diseases known to be caused by toxic poisoning. हमारे जो पत्नी हैं, 
ये पानी के जरिए से ही वो बीमार हुई है उसका कैंसर बन गया और कैंसर के वजह से वो आठ तारीख में डेथ हो गई अभी और भी यहाँ से बहुत कई सकत ऐसे हैं जो बीमार हैं कैंसर के हैं Villages affected by toxic contamination are already paying thousands of rupees every month on medical treatment alone. The worst affected villages are spending well over 1 lakh rupees every month. For the economically weak rural communities, such expenditure means neglecting education, clothing, and other priorities that are so essential to a civilized existence. We feel that it is the community's participation. The active role of the government departments like the state pollution control board the central pollution control board and all the stakeholders they should all sit and find sustainable solutions to the river which was considered to be the lifeline of this region spread in six districts according to the un committee on economic social and cultural rights the right to safe water is a basic human right and resurgent india confident of her place in the world ranks 120th out of 122 countries in terms of water quality over 20 crore indian citizens do not have access to safe clean water and an estimated 90% of india's water resources are contaminated with untreated industrial and domestic waste pesticides and fertilizers it is high time that steps be taken to enforce and if necessary enact legislation to protect the hindan catchment area from further toxic contamination a river has already died and so have many human beings if governmental authorities delay taking responsibility now they will have condemned many more of the nation's poor to tragic and painful death we are planning to knock the doors of the honorable supreme court of india in case we don't get justice from the government agencies and we would pray before the court to find sustainable solutions regular monitoring of the river and long term solutions so that the river gets back to its original life